Hi everyone, um, so I'm back for part two. Um, my battery died on the first one, so I'm going to finish up here. It should only take about five more minutes to finish what I wanted to cover. So hopefully you'll stick with me. Um, <clears throat> so last time we left off at uh, dietary recommendations for diabetes. And I left off right at talking about vegetable oils. So I wanted to talk about these and why they really aren't good for us to be eating, in my opinion. I don't think they are healthy fats because the way most vegetable oils are made, things like canola oil and whatnot, is they take the plant and they press the, um, <clears throat> they press the plant to pull all of the stuff, all the juices and oils out of it. And then they'll take a chemical solvent like hexane and use that to pull the oil out of the solution. And then once that's out, then they will try to clean up the oil. But the problem is there's still a lot of solvents in there, organic solvent that they've used to purify the oil with. So I don't like to use these because there are chemicals in vegetable oils that you shouldn't be consuming. So <clears throat> I tend to recognize or recommend that people eat more animal fats. So things like butter, make sure you get an organic version of this. That way there's not so many hormones and there's more omega-3s. Or not omega-3, sorry, conjugated linoleic acid is going to be what's primarily in the butter. That's the good fat that you want there. And then you can also find a quality source of lard. If you know a farmer that sells quality animals, there are some brands that you can buy at the store. So this is pork fat. You can have tallow. If you don't want to use animal fat because you're a vegetarian or a vegan or something, coconut oil is really nice. This is just pressed right out of the right out of the plant. It's not processed, so they don't have to use solvents for coconut oil to extract it. Also, olive oil is a nice alternative. Do be careful with olive oil though, because it is, even though it is pressed out of the plant and it's a natural oil. It's not as stable as some of the animal oils because it's not a solid at room temperature. So it's not as stable even as coconut oil. So, um, <clears throat> and another thing is that a lot of olive oils are actually adulterated. So many, many companies, uh, common ones that you find in grocery stores, will cut their olive oils with vegetable oils to produce them cheaper. So make sure you're getting a quality source of olive oil if you're going to be using it every day for cooking. Uh, otherwise, I would just stick with butter. Um, <clears throat> some other things that you can do... Oh, and your omega-3s here. So if you can find a quality omega-3 supplement, this would be really great. Or just have your fatty fish to eat every now and then. So these, these are going to be good oils to consume. So overall, <clears throat> my recommendation for people with diabetes, again, I am not a doctor, I am not a nutritionist, so this is my opinion and coming from my experience working with people. Um, a good diet is going to be high in both raw and cooked vegetables. You need both. It should be high in beans, particularly for the fiber. Um, beans are a really great source of fiber. Yes, you can get fiber from things like brown rice and quinoa, um, but a lot of people are actually allergic to these grains. So beans can be a little bit less inflammatory. I usually recommend that people that are sensitive to food start with lentils, because lentils are a little bit easier to digest. So you can have beans. Uh, another good one is seaweed. And this is something that you can just kind of get in the habit of eating. You can buy this at pretty much any Asian store. 
So you can just get like the sushi nori that you wrap sushi in and just kind of munch on those throughout the day. They're very high in vitamins and minerals. You can also buy kombu. This is um, a harder type of seaweed. So this is for soup stocks. Um, so you can make soup out of it and have soup during the day, like miso or something like that. Um, seaweed's really high in calcium, magnesium, iodine, a lot of other trace minerals that you can't really get from food nowadays, but it's in seaweed. So you can have that. Uh, another thing that's really great is vitamin-rich protein sources. So this is not really going to be muscle meats. This is going to be things like uh, shellfish, again this is not shrimp. I'm not saying shrimp are bad or muscle meats are bad, but you're going to get the most vitamins and minerals out of shellfish as opposed to other types of meat. Uh, liver is really, really great. Super high in vitamin D, vitamin B, vitamin A, all these things, and it's readily available to the body. So we have liver. Uh, if you want to eat some other organ meats, that's great too. Um, beef heart is actually pretty tasty. It tastes kind of like ground beef. It doesn't have a weird texture. So that might be a nice place to start if you're feeling kind of queasy about this. Um, <clears throat> also, super important, uh, bone broth. So bone broth is just simmering bones in some water. You can put some vegetables in there to make it taste good. And it pulls all of the vitamins and minerals out of the bones. So essentially what this is, is it's like liquid amino acids, which are super, super healing to the digestive tract. So if you're vegetarian, I recommend a fish bone broth. So you can make that instead. Um, and if you're vegan, I recommend that you break being a vegan and have fish bone broth at a minimum on a regular basis because it's a great source of amino acids that you really, really need to properly heal. So um, these, are, these are crucial to um, recovering and getting a high vitamin-rich diet. And then also, last but not least, are your anti-inflammatory carbs. So this might be really hard for someone with diabetes to consume because most carbohydrates are going to increase your blood glucose levels. But if you can tolerate them and get them into your diet, I would highly suggest winter squashes. So these are going to be things like butternut squash, acorn squash, spaghetti squash. These are your winter squashes. And also potatoes. Sweet potatoes as well are really nice sources of anti-inflammatory carbs unless you're allergic to nightshades and then potatoes might be a problem. But sweet potatoes aren't nightshades, so if you want to try those instead, that's good. And if you can tolerate it, slippery elm is also a really nice carbohydrate. And it's it's pretty much a food, so you can kind of eat it like a food. It's a, It'll turn kind of goopy. You can probably cook with it, um, put it in soups and stuff. So slippery elm is really nice to help moisten the body. That's what the job of the carbohydrates are, is to moisten the body. And then the fiber is to remove the heat. So we're clearing out heat. Seaweed also helps clear heat. Our vitamin-rich proteins uh, really give the body the vitamins it needs to heal. And then our anti-inflammatory carbs are bringing moisture into the body so that we can recover from that yin deficiency that's associated with diabetes. So um, that's my take on dietary um, for this condition and just for eating healthy in general. But I said earlier in the video that I would talk about the trichosanthes and Ophiogon formula. I didn't have time, so I'm going to get to that in the next video where I'm going to show you how to make an herbal formula for diabetes at home. And that will be a little bit more extensive, so tune into that if you want to know more about that. 
Otherwise, if you have any other types of questions, you can find me at wisteriaherbs.com. Feel free to send me any questions that you might have or any comments. You can also post them here with the video. Um, but thanks for watching. I'd love to hear from you. Take care.